I put up this bluebird house a year ago, and I've never had bluebirds make it inside. Ugh, look how excited she is. Before I hung it, I actually did a ton of research to try to get it right. But I didn't get it right. And now I'm stuck leaving the front door open to stop bees from getting in. These are house sparrows. They are aggressive, and in North America, they are considered highly invasive. And they have staked their claim to my bluebird house. Even if bluebirds could manage to nest in here, house sparrows will often smash their eggs and will even kill adult bluebirds while they're inside. It's bad. And with all my careful planning, I was sure I would outsmart them. A year ago, I ordered a nest box with the right diameter hole for eastern bluebirds, and I got a metal ring for the entry, also with the same inside diameter to stop any predators from scratching their way in. Many vendors will try to sell you plastic rings, by the way, but skip those. They're not stopping anyone. I also got a predator guard for the pole to avoid snakes and hungry mammals coming up for a bluebird snack. And along the way, I discovered some delightful videos people uploaded with their product reviews, showing their predator guards hard at work. Although this gal has figured out a trick. I decided to go with a cone-shaped guard after seeing an impressive but honestly unnerving video of a snake doing something called lasso locomotion to climb wide poles like these tube-shaped guards. We were absolutely amazed. Well, it was an accidental discovery. It's a very cool trick, and I have tremendous respect for snakes, but I just kind of never want to see that in person. I faced our bluebird house to the southeast, since most storms here in Maryland come from the northwest. And this will also help the bluebirds get some afternoon shade in the summers. And then I prepped our nest box to get it ready to add a sparrow spooker. These weird jingly jangly things are a must to keep house sparrows from decimating your bluebird B&B. There's a few variations, and I made my own, which I'll explain in a minute, but you can buy these pre-made too. It's recommended that you hang your sparrow spooker on your nest box only after bluebirds have laid their eggs. Bluebirds have excellent vision, so they'll think it's weird, but it won't really scare them. Especially not once they have eggs inside and are invested in the house. House sparrows, on the other hand, don't have great vision. And they will think your contraption is some kind of witchcraft, and it'll keep them off the house and hopefully away from your bluebird family. And now here's where I really think I went wrong. I decided to put our bluebird house close to our house. It's critical that you monitor the nest box basically daily to keep bluebirds safe from house sparrows. I figured I'd be able to watch it better if it was near our windows. But bluebirds and house sparrows are in direct competition for these birdhouses. Interacting with wild animals and ecosystems is never as simple as it seems. And bluebird houses can do a lot of good, especially in areas where their natural habitat has been removed. But just hanging a nest box and letting it become a factory to make more invasive house sparrows only hurts bluebirds. So what should I have done differently? Well, house sparrows actually prefer nesting close to people and their buildings, often using holes in your house or other human-made structures like streetlights. But you won't find house sparrows in larger swaths of woodlands, forests, or grasslands. But you know who loves an open grassland is bluebirds. I should have put my nest box farther from my house up in this open space out back. I wouldn't be able to watch it as easily from my windows, but I think house sparrows also wouldn't be so interested in it. But this post is anchored into the ground, so here we are, and I'm going to try to salvage this house. In the future, I would try one of the more easily movable posts so I could adjust location as needed. They're a little bit more expensive, but so is buying a bluebird house and not being able to use it. Usually, we wouldn't put the sparrow spooker on until after bluebirds have laid eggs, but as things are now, they can't even get to that stage. So I'm going to go ahead and attach this trip line around the rooftop surface. This little foot catching contraption is meant to keep the house sparrows off the roof. This sparrow spooker also has two weighted strands that dangle in the front. But I'm going to tie those securely on the top for now and wait until bluebirds are nesting to let those back down. Now let's close the door again and see if this finally gets the house sparrows to give up. I can't believe this, but just about 10 minutes after I closed the door back up, the house sparrows came and landed on the roof to try to get back in. They hated the rooftop trip line. I didn't quite catch them on camera, but just picture cats when you put little boots on them. They continued trying at the house for a few minutes, and then quit, but they still kept close to this house and are continuing to be extremely territorial. But the bluebirds are holding their own so far, and for the first time I've actually seen them make it all the way inside. This house is still empty, nobody's living inside yet, but my bluebirds are still putting up a fight, and I will too. I'm not saying you shouldn't hang a birdhouse, but when we decide to intervene with nature, it's important that we act as stewards, and understand the animals and the environment that we're altering. Even when we're well-meaning, sometimes our actions can cause more harm than good. And now that I mention it, if you're feeding the birds, are you also doing this?